Joining me this week is Canadian blues artist and frontman and songwriter for April Wine, Miles Goodwin. Thanks so much for coming on the show. My pleasure. I love kind of, uh, as a musician myself, just, just kind of learning about people's beginnings in music and just, can you kind of just tell me, um, you know, what part of the country you grew up and just first getting into music? Uh, well, I grew up where I live now, which is in Nova Scotia, um, in a small town down here called Waverly, Nova Scotia. And I just, I didn't get into music because, all, you know, my, my mother's side of the family in particular played music. They were all uh, guitar players, singers. I mean, a lot of people down here are they almost, you know, most people that can pick up a guitar <laughs> or some instrument and play to some extent. It's part of the culture down here. And uh, so, yeah, and then, of course, the Beatles came along. I was a Beatle baby. I played in Beatles songs and Rolling Stones and in cover bands in high school and, and so forth. And uh, what, were, what was the scene sort of like in Halifax? What were the gigs like um, when you first started doing them? You know, I was in a cover band, so... Uh, you know, I, I, I wasn't I, I wasn't in it very long. I, I'm very fortunate. Like I, I, I was I was studied to be a, a mechanical uh, uh, designer, uh, mechanical draftsman uh, 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 and, and designer, and I was going to join the Air Force. And, and uh, I I was in my second year of this. Uh, first year was up in Ontario, Brantford, Ontario. And the second year was here in Halifax. And I went to the recruiting office to join the Air Force, and, I, and they wouldn't let me in for a couple of reasons. The main one being I have a heart murmur. And, but the, the, one of the reasons, I should say, was because I have a heart murmur. And the other thing uh, that really nailed it was they told me that the kind of work that I wanted to do, drawing the, you know, jet airplanes and all these kind of things and all that potential was all done by civilians. And I wanted to be in uniform, and I didn't want to sit in an office and uh, you know uh, on Water Street in Halifax and look staring out a window for the rest of my life. So I just walked away. I joined a cover band called Eastgate Sanctuary in 1968. We went to Cape Breton in 1969. Uh, a very short time later, I was uh, in April Wine, and we we were only around for six months when we left there and headed for uh, Montreal and got a record deal the following year. So I didn't really hang out here. I wasn't part of the scene down. Here here there were local bands um but I, I you know i didn't i didn't really experience it very much I, I i moved on very quickly i really wasn't part of it but at that time at 68 to 69 there was typically what was going on here was everyone else everybody had long hair everybody was doing some kind of drugs and and, and playing psychedelic or music or whatever they had cover songs bands were developing uh, like april wine um and so forth. So it's kind of the same here as everywhere else. I just didn't stick around here very long once I decided to become a professional. Yeah, and did was there was there a sense um, in in the early seventies or late sixties of this desire or almost necessity to have to go down south to to play and to to get some better gigs and to make some money? Was what was the feeling for an aspiring musician at that time? Well, I never, I never did that. You know, there, there were some people down here that, you know, the thing about maritime is I found out over all the decades is most of them don't like to leave home, yeah. and uh, and if they do, it's for a very short time and they come back. Uh, but we didn't go to the states, uh, and a lot of this, a lot of these players, when I say they didn't, didn't want to leave, and if they did, they didn't stay away very long. That was in Canada as well. But I wasn't that set in mind. I, I never had a problem. Uh, I never really looked back, you know, so, uh, you know, I, it, 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 a lot of people felt throughout Canada that you had to go into the U.S. to get a deal and all that. And there's lots of stories and rumors, you know, and, and facts around all of that kind of stuff and the reaction to Canadian content, the 50% yeah. rule of playing Canadian content, how the Americans way back in the day reacted to that. Bands like the Guess Who called themselves the Guess Who because they didn't want to say really, they didn't want anybody to know that they were from Canada, although they dressed like Canadians, didn't they? Uh, with their tartan shirts. <laughs> you know, I, guess, <laughs> I don't know if it's tap tartan the word I'm using, it, but you know what I mean, those work shirts with the plaid shirts, I guess they're called. And uh, the look that they had, they certainly didn't look American. But anyway, um, yeah, so, you know, I didn't experience that whole thing about, like, you know, I did later on, in, you know, in time think about moving to the States and L.A. and stuff just because I thought it would be fun, but I never did. always remained in Canada. And jumping forward, Miles, um, Miles Goodwin and Friends, uh, Juno nominated and just uh, recently come out with a follow-up part two to this album. Can you just sort of give us a little uh, overview of, of what you've been up to recently? Yeah. Well, 
company, well, I released an album in 2018 called Miles Goodwin and Friends of the Blues. And this is something I'd worked on for a very long time, almost 10 years. It's just something on the side. I had an experience in 07 where I almost died and I was in three hospitals one day and, and months of rehab and stuff from eternal bleeding. And, and they told me, because I passed out on the way to an, air, on an airport, you know, I would get out of the car because I was feeling sick. I was asked the driver to pull over and I passed out and then the journey began of healing and, and I was told that, you know, I would have died by that time the next day. If this had happened, I would have been dead, period. So then I thought about that. There's some things I wanted to do, and you realize your own mortality, and I wanted to write a couple of books, and I did. One of them was my memoir, Just Between You and Me, which was in the Globe, Toronto Globe Mail bestseller list. I wrote a second book called Elvis and Tiger after that. Uh, and I wanted to do a blues record, so I started writing, and the concept was really for me to write and sing uh, these uh, blues songs and have great blues players play them, because uh, I've always liked the blues. I was never a, a blues fanatic, but I did have, um, uh, it was a connection for me, uh, and uh, and it, it worked out well, so I, I got the songs. I called all these great blues players, uh, the who's who of in Canada and some people from the States, and everybody liked what I was doing. It came on board, and we released it, and, and it was dominated for Blues Album of the Year 2019, uh, won the East Coast Music Award uh, 2019, same, same category. Uh, it was in the America, the top 40 for over a year, so it was very, very successful, and I didn't want to waste any time, so I, I did another one right away, and it's called Miles Goodwin and Friends of the Blues 2, and uh, it's having the same kind of success so far, so, uh, and people are accepting the critics, the blues critics are accepting it, they're really saying, you know, the folks that, you know, forget April why this is something else, it's the real deal, so it, it feels really good. Absolutely, I was just going to say that, I mean, it's got to be nice to get to get the props um, from that from that industry, you know, knowing that you ventured into a different industry, you're trying something new, um, so it must feel great. So congratulations! I mean, I've listened to some of the stuff; it's fantastic. Yeah, well, well, thank you. I really enjoy it, and I got a wonderful blues band, and uh, and uh, you know, and this enables me to enjoy my other ventures. You know, I for a while I wanted out of April Wine. It was very uh, well known. I did, I, you know, interviewed, we interviewed a lot of players from all over, not just from Canada, but from the U.S. to replace me and, and nobody in the band or anywhere, anybody was happy. Uh, and it's hard to find somebody that sings lead, uh, sings, you know, lead singer, the same place, lead guitar and everything. Like, you know, they just aren't as popular as, you know, easy to find as, as if you're one or the other. Uh, and or they didn't have the right sound or the right attitude, but, you, know, you know, that kind of thing. And eventually I said, okay, fine, so let's do this. I'll do 30 shows a year. That's it. I got, I've been tethered to April Wine all of my life, and I've got other things to do while I'm still able. That's when I started writing books, and that's also in particular the blues record. And so now I enjoy April Wine. I totally enjoy it. We, we do, what, 25 to 30 shows. We're off the road. We just did our last one in New York here lab about a week and a half ago. Uh, and that's it, man. I'm, I'm booking April White Geeks now. We've got one down in Colorado, another one in Pennsylvania. There'll be some stuff in Canada. And we'll do another 25 to 30 next year. But I have room for other projects, which uh, also includes my trio called Just Between You and Me Live, which is uh, an acoustic uh, show with me and Jim Henman. Yeah. Uh, Jim Henman is the original member of April Wine and my buddy since 1963, and also Bruce Dixon, who was with uh, who was with the In My Blues Band. He plays bass and sings, and the three of us have this show. Um, that's uh, that's another um, thing that I, I love doing. Uh, it's with friends, and people love the show. The reviews are again, they're like they're through the roof. So it's it's really nice that I can do these three things and not just one thing anymore. Um. You know what? You know you're you're an incredibly prolific songwriter. Um, you know, I know what is your process? You know, are there are there are there times when you enjoy the process, times when you hate the process, or how does blues differ? Or you know, how does it work for you? Well, well, well very quickly, you know, it, 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 the thing is, in order to write, there has to be passion. As far as I'm concerned, anybody can write. I can write all day long. I can. I could turn out, I don't know, 10 songs a month if I really had to from would gum to my head. But the thing is, the only stuff that really counts, the stuff that really matters and sticks to the walls and become classics or hits or, or just stuff that you love is only, only, is only developed through passion. As far as I'm concerned, 
the best of April Wine was when I was very passionate about April Wine. When I was passionate about songwriting, uh, songs like Roller, Just Between You and Me, or Wouldn't Want to Lose Your Love, or I'm on F- I Didn't Write I'm on Fire for You, or, you know, Rock and Roll's A Vicious Game, all of those, all of those, all of those hits that April Wine had, uh, Just Between, uh, Tonight's a Wonderful Night to Fall in Love, whatever it is. And, and a lot of the B-sides, too, you know, that people that know April Wine know, you know, Victim for Your Lover, Come Here, The Band, and all these other songs. Uh, you know, I Like to Rock, and all of them on and on. Uh, enough is enough, and all of these. So they're all written with passion. And right now, and for a while, I've had no passion for April Wine in terms of a new record. It doesn't interest me. If someone said you have to do it, here's a million dollars, I would probably write a shitty record. Right. because I can't do it without the passion. And because I have so much passion uh, for the blues, I can't not write. <laughs> if I get up in the morning and I pick up a guitar. I do it every day, my, pretty much every day of my life. I start with, 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 with you know, with picking up I do with the guitar, just doodling or something. Well, like, you know, and there's always something coming out. So yeah. people say, well, how did you write this award-winning album over all those years and turn around and put another one out within 12 months with even more songs and the, and the review is love it better than the first one how could you write 14 songs in 12 months and record them and get them out <laughs> I said because I'm on fire I've got a passion for it that flame may go out tomorrow right. but it's burning bright so that means I can do it because I love to do it I spent uh, a session I've never done it before yesterday in my office with a fellow in his, his at his place, a, a blues master named Jack DeKaiser, a multi award winning guitar player, singer, songwriter, you name it, uh, Hall of Famer, Juno, all that kind of stuff. He and I had a Facebook writing session yesterday for ninety minutes, and it was a ball. We came up with three great ideas, right. and uh, so you know. And the thing about the blues thing now is like we're going to rehearse next week, although there's no shows coming up because we just want to hang and we want to play. And so what we have now is a new system. I have a, I have a, 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 a rehearsal uh, space here uh, at my place, and we're setting up cameras and everything. We're going to start doing videos all the time and just spitting them out, whether they're uh, new songs, original songs, cover songs. It's just going to be a whole media thing that we're all very excited about. We want people to see the band that hears play because it's a really good band. When people are talking about creativity, some people often say, you know, is that a gift or where does that come from or where do those songs come from? And is, or is it just hard work? Is it a grind or is it a combo, you know? Well, yeah, it's a combo. I mean, absolutely. The thing is, you know, the writing and the playing and all that, kind of, it's, all, it's all inspirational and it's all sweat. I just watched a little, a little bit, uh, an interview with, uh, with Rick Derringer about a week or so ago. And it was kind of interesting to watch it. And I know Rick, Rick played on Friends of the Blues 1. He plays, uh, he plays on one song as my blues guest, as my friend on Friends of the Blues. And anyway, and he was, and he was talking about um, writing rock and roll hoochie coo that we all know and yeah. love. It's a classic. And of course, he, when he was a kid, he had Hang On Sloopy and on and on and on. So anyway, uh, Rock and Roll Hoochie Coo, and, and he was talking about the writing process, and, and I, I understood every word. I knew what he was talking about. At one point, he says, yeah, you get the inspiration, and I had this, and I had that. And then the rest of it is sweat, folks. It's sweat. You work. It's work. And it's always work, and it's never not work. And I'm saying he's so right. <laughs> He's so right. It's all about work. It's all about it's all about work and sweat and 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 being tenacious and and and, and really going for it. And so a lot of people don't understand that. I, I think especially we've all you know not all. I can't say everybody's been high, but there was times when I smoked and I did all kinds of those things as a young man. And, and they were they were cool. But you know when the fog clears, <laughs> you know it's about work and clarity. In my mind, I mean, I could be wrong. Willie Nelson may disagree. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> if Hendrix was still around, he he was like, uh, uh-uh, uh, man. But you know, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, especially in this day and age, because it's very different tonight, yeah. these days rather. And I find that the people that do really well, and the people that I know, you know, uh, uh, that I meet in person, face to face, and so forth, they're hardworking people. Yeah, absolutely. They're, they're, they're in the clouds, you know, uh, and. Uh, and it just comes down to inspiration. You must have a gift. 
Uh, it can be that you can be that you can certainly develop as a songwriter because there are ways to develop your songwriting. There's no question. And then there's there's those that are inspirational. They just come and they're it's a fountain of 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 of, of, of ideas and words and music and notes and everything else that um, can't be denied. And there's many like that. I mean, geez, I hate to, I hate kind of saying, oh, here's an example, because I really do age myself, but mm-hmm. when you get, it, it, like a Paul McCartney, or a Bob Dylan, or, or Bruce Springsteen, or, or, or Rick Derringer, or Willie Nelson, any, any of those people, they are, they are gifted songwriters, because they didn't write one hit. <laughs> they didn't write four or five hits, they wrote many hits. They are still around. Their songs, when you can have a song that come, becomes a classic, that's really something, and but if you can have a, a, a catalog of classics uh, that the you know, people, everybody knows and can sing along, and it, that, that's something that's special. And usually, those people are inspired. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and, and back to your band again. I mean, is there any cool stories or, or your experience in the studio producing this this recent album? Like, is there things you're still learning as a music producer? Oh well, yeah, because I'm in a new genre blues but uh you know i i've been you know I, i'm more involved i think maybe now producing than i ever was because uh it's all my thing now i don't have uh, although i produced or co-produced almost all of april i starting album starting in 1975 with stand back um uh, it was a different thing it was a band and this is not a band this is miles right mm-hmm. and i do everything my way and when the record label says ah you know you get rid of that piano put on a guitar you know and I go no 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 this is the way it is and and it was way my way's working out so it's really nice to get to an age where all you care about is music you don't care about the business you just do it yeah. and uh every everything else be damned it's just you have a focus stay stay focused stay and stay on track do your thing because when your thing works, it's the best. When you, you know, I remember when grunge came out around 19, uh, what was that, 90, something like that, uh, late 80s, uh, when grunge came out, all the record labels wanted grunge bands, so all bands that weren't, weren't grunge tr- became grunge or wanted to be grunge. And, right. and once you jump on the flavor of the month or the, the craze that's going on, uh, and it passes you by, uh, you've been damaged, you're damaged goods, right? And, Maybe what you were doing before you jumped on the grunge wagons come around, and now that's really popular, and it's too late for you. Right. So I think the best thing to do is just and what so many greats do. They just do their thing, and people find them. And there's longevity in that, and there's honesty in that, that you can't, you can't, you can't fool the people all the time. Well, listen, um, I'm really happy that uh, the music continues to pour out of you, um, and I wish you the best of luck with uh, part three, and also enjoying doing some shows with with, uh, Miles Goodwin and friends. Uh, Miles Goodwin, thank you so much for coming on the show. You bet. Okay. All right. Thanks a lot.